You know, if the old ad adage is right, that save the best for last, you're in for a treat with the first speaker. How about that? <laughs> well, today I'll tell you about a story that changed my life. It was November of 2012. I was at Salesforce at the time. And we had just flown in one of our premier customers, Groupon, to San Francisco for an executive briefing center. And in the first break, I was pouring coffee in the break room. And one of my colleagues looks at me and said, you would not believe what my six-year-old daughter, Sarah, did yesterday. Raised my head and I said, all right, what did she do? He said, I was sitting in my basement with my laptop, sitting on the couch, getting ready for the week ahead. And she came and she sat quietly next to me. And she sat quietly for 30 seconds and he finally broke the silence and said, Dad, why isn't this TV turning on? And the dad said, honey, you have to turn the TV on for it to turn on. And she said, no, it should know I'm here. It should just turn it on by itself. Now that moment was a life-changing moment for me for one very specific reason. I went back into that Groupon meeting thinking, are we ready for this girl? I couldn't sleep that whole night. Hour after hour, minute after minute, I kept asking myself, what triggers her? What is behind that one very seemingly in innocent question? And how does this factor of human and machine going to go forward? And how are we as the builders of technology and the believers of technology and the advisors of technology going to make that happen? Now, I understand that in 2019, this concept is not as fresh, but in 2012 it was. And as I started to understand more and more what this generation meant, what the handoff between human and machine is starting to do, it continued to boggle my mind. Generation Alpha is what kids from this generation are from. They're the kids that are born between 2010 and are going to be born between 2025. And there are 2.5 million of them being born every week around the world. Now think about it this way. This is the first generation that is born into AI, that is directly consuming technology, whether it's your iPad or the Instagrams or the YouTubes of the world, which already has embedded AI thinking in it. Many of us have been fortunate enough to live most of our lives holding our own thoughts. Sarah and the future Sarahs might not be that lucky. It is how the alphas going to communicate with the machines is going to shape our future. And the future is going to be interesting because the amplified ability of both human and machine is going to solve the world's biggest problems. But it does come with a lot of challenges as well. Not everything is as pretty. Now on the one hand, these technologies are giving Sarah and many others a comfort because as the machine is learning them more, their reliance increases and the machine doesn't judge. The machine almost becomes a second parent. Now the alphas, eventually when they become a consumer of yours, imagine that little entitlement that said, why isn't this TV turning on in every use case of business? And imagine how unready we as a human species are to tackle that demand of Sarah and the likes of Sarah. As I advise many of my uh, clients across the board, I've taken up the Sarah cause almost as a personal cause. Because what this represents is the opportunity for humanity. 
what this represents is a partnership, a collective growth of man learning machine and machine learning man. The handoffs are going to continue to go in another direction. 2010 was the first year when deep learning started to really bring the understanding of the human side from the machines. They say that artificial intelligence is like a seven to eight year old child right now. So the Sarahs of today and the AI of today are taking this journey together. And whether it's a Siri application or whether it's a Cirrus application that understands and connects the body and the mind, or whether it's a Netflix program that Sarah would never be able to say or start the journey on. The journey for her will continue to be started already. Now I took up Sarah's cause with governments and many other corporations, Global 500, Fortune 500s as well. And it's been my cause since that one moment. I take that cause to every audit that I do, to that every journey that I build, every execution piece that I embody. And now, it is your cause too. Thank you.